Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Tell Us More Live Experience. We're broadcasting to you live from Kilani in Johannesburg, South Africa. The date is the 143rd of March, PC, post-corona. Uh, that's how we're counting time now. For those of you who don't know, like before we do an episode, myself and uh, my producer slash director, partner in rhyme, Wade Rose, will we'll look for new stories to discuss. But I uh, don't know if you've noticed, because of corona, there's nothing new that really pops up. It's the same shit. And to be honest, we don't want to be here bringing up statistics because that's just exhausting. It's really depressing. Um, so that has been one of the bizarre things about this lockdown experience is that even in the search to find new things to do and new experiences, there's so many lim limitations rather uh, about what you can talk about. What has been interesting, a lot of people have been going on hikes recently. That's a big one. I keep seeing Henop's. Uh, trail being tagged in instagram first of all you guys are giving away your locations you are snitching on yourselves in your 12 party hikes um but that's the new thing i personally walking has never been my forte although it is one of those activities i'm going to start having to do very soon just to stay in shape i've gotten to that point now where i'm spending way too much time uh, on the lounge and watching the same shit i uh, i recently watched a local tv show very recently very tra traumatic experience. I didn't know it was going to happen, and, and that didn't fill me with any comfort at all. And afterwards, I just went went back and reverted to playing video games. Um, so it has been interesting. I wonder what you guys have been doing, what you guys have been uh, trying to to do to spice things up. Spice things up. Remember when that was just in the bedroom? Now it's everywhere. We're spicing things up. What kind of activities have you guys been getting up to to try and uh, keep yourself uh, sharp or try different things? I know the whole idea of practicing a new skill that uh, ended very quickly. I was on Duolingo for a whole week, uh, learning how to say uh, uh, a cat in French. I've already forgotten because I'm not speaking French to anybody, and that was a complete waste of my time. I'll try to uh, uh, dive back in, rather. To everyone who's been uh, watching over the past few weeks, thank you for joining in. We do see all your comments. We just want to let you know it is sometimes hard to kind of have a conversation and then jump back into the comments as it can uh, disrupt the flow. But we do appreciate you guys shouting us out to uh, watching us live and those of you who watch this in posterity. It's going to be a fun episode. This gentleman who's on today... Um, has been doing really incredible stuff, not just in the lockdown, but prior to it. And it's kind of uh, one of those uh, people who's good when it, terms, when it comes to multi-discipline. Uh, I don't even know if that's the right word. It's core. We're leaving core out of this. We've, uh, we've used up all our score. We're going to revert this back to Venek. This is going to be on S1 when all of this is done. Uh, so we've got to make sure it's got that quota. But uh, yeah, we're going to chat this uh, next guest who's been doing incredible things. Let's welcome him onto the show. Without further ado, the wonderful Donovan Goliath. Yo! Yo what did eat, my man? Yes, bra. That uh, Tron music that you were playing there. <laughs> it's like you're about to fight someone, but in the 80s only. Yes. It, 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 I was like, I was waiting to see, you know, what was it? Galaga. That game, Galaga. And Which one is that now? <laughs> I think it was, it was on 18 in 1. <laughs> with, a, with a jet moves. At the bottom of the screen, then you got to shoot things up. I think it was called Galaga. But, That's fine. You know, those, those cartridges, it was called Galaga on 18 in 1. But then when you yeah. buy 32 in 1, it's called Galaxian. You know? <laughs> <laughs> one would say Super Mario Brothers. The other one was just Bros. Do you remember that? Uh, I do. Those yeah, it was always like 32 in 1, but four versions of the same game. 
Then yes. it was like Olympics, Commonwealth yes. Games, uh, yes. Sports Day. Then you're like, this is all the same thing. <laughs> Why are you same. lying to it? <laughs> it's all the same. I must admit, though, it did take me a very long time to, to figure out that it wasn't actually called Super Mario Bros. Um, you know, Cross Amos. Because we just called it, hey, <laughs> Lord Lali Bros. And Fitz. Yeah. Oh, brothers. Oh, that's what it is. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Do you ever find yourself in your adult life where you say a, a word that you, for the longest time, were like, I'm sure this is how it's pronounced. And then you hear it somewhere else. And you're like, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is the one word? Uh, no, it'll come to me. It'll come. While we're chatting, it'll come to me. Yeah. At some point. For me, for me, I whenever I hear the British say yogurt, then I'm like, hey, 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 yogurt. Hey, hey. yogurt. Then I'm like, yes. hey, yo yogurt. yogurt. No, yogurt. 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 It's, uh, like, no, I don't is, know. It's the bizarre. tip of my tongue, this thing. I can't, I can't figure it out. What is it now? No, it'll come. It'll come. We'll, we'll get we'll get to it. But uh, like I said, yeah. we we're in the midst of these really bizarre times. Um, it's been interesting, kind of watching how everybody's been making stuff and creating. Like, what's yeah. kind of your experience been? Because you've done some really dope stuff with Castle, I think uh, Gumtree too, a couple of other yeah. brands. Um, but but it's what's fascinating is like you had all these skills already. It was really just an yeah. element of of using them within these circumstances. Yeah, man, you know, I think very early on, um, uh, you know, I guess my team and I first, uh, we, we shut down the, the Melville Comedy Club, you know, before the yeah. official lockdown even happened. Um, we knew that it, it would never, it would never last, it would never work. So we had sure. to shut that down. And uh, we kind of, we had a meeting about it. And, you know, we all agreed that we're probably not going to be on stage for the next year and a half, like, realistically. Right. <laughs> you know, like re realistically, so long game, bruh, long game already from the get go. Um, and then the official lockdown happened. We were told that we needed to stay in our homes. It was mm. tight, you know. Sure. So uh, my girlfriend Davina and I was also an entertainer. She plays the violin. Same situation, mm. you sure. know. And yeah, man, I I I I knew that if I was stuck at home. I would get a little depressed, you know, not making, not creating, not being on stage because you take a big part, especially if you do comedy, you know, there's a big, sure. there's a, like, it's a big chunk that you take away from somebody, that excitement of going, to, it's like fishing, like you just yeah. going to throw stuff out and, you know, the, the, it's, it's, you never know if you're going to get any positive feedback, you know, from what you've thrown out, but it's still sure. fun nonetheless to try. Mm. So, so yeah that was taken away and you know we we had a chat about it and i said you know let's uh let's just start making stuff because we've never collaborated you know she's mm -hmm. a violinist you know i do comedy and talk rubbish online sure. and yeah we just started making things you know where uh we just kind of blend our skills together and it was something fresh it was something new uh, a lot of people were stuck at home and they were online so there was a captive audience the mm. first post went well, so we were like, oh, let's just keep it going. Because the excuse wasn't time. Like, we had yes. time. Yeah, you, you know? No one is busy. None of us have been busy. Yeah. We, yeah. we had time yeah. to make this stuff. But, you know, the other thing is, um, like, a lot of the stuff that we had put, up, put out up till now is stuff yeah. that I've been wanting to do for the last eight years. Wow. But, you know, and, and I'll get back to this story, but I think it's very important to say that, um, yeah, for the last eight years, man, I've been wanting to be a, a little bit more active online on social media because I come from an advertising background. I've got multiple skills, you know, I, mm -hmm. I, I can, I take pictures, I can design, I can illustrate, I can do all of these things. But, yeah. you know, when you convince yourself that uh, you should only be doing one thing, like yeah. that, that. A crazy jack of all trades thing, you know, uh, it, it's very negative. I don't like that saying anymore um, yes. because it locked me into um, a discipline which was just trying to focus on comedy. Just well, trying the, to well, do stand well, also, the problem with that phrase is that it ends with the jack of all trades is the master of none. Exactly. Right? Which is also so a, a distortion negative. of the idea. Yeah, ex exactly, man. So, um, I, I watched a, a great, and, and I, I heard you speaking about it earlier on about, you know, being a multidisciplinarian or whatever, but the, mm. the coined phrase actually is multi-potentialite, which Ooh. challenges the jack of all trades thing. And basically mm. it's, 
it's somebody who is who is good at a lot of things because there sure. are those people. You know, yeah. I had an interview with Lesejo Tlabi Coconut Kells um, yeah. earlier on today, and she's one of those people. Like, anything she touches <laughs> is going to kill, you know? She's a great <laughs> author, sure. she's a great actress. Like, she just, everything she touches, is like, she's good at, you know? And she admits yeah. it. And I like that energy, you know? Um, but then I messed myself up at some point where I read a book called The One Thing, which Ooh. is also a and the opening of this book, great. New York Times bestseller. It was recommended to me by a friend. You know, it was there, bro. They hyped this thing up. So I was like, yeah, yeah. I'm in here, man. <laughs> and um, the opening line of that book says, if you chase two rabbits, you'll never catch either one. Wow. Hey. And I was like, oh, man. So I messed myself up reading that thing because I took it too hard. <laughs> you know, so I'm like, no, no, no. Let me focus on one thing. Let me just focus on doing my thing. Because they've got great examples in there. The Beatles, Oprah, a lot of these people mm, who own sure. you When you think about them, you, or you think about a discipline, you think them, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, man. So I kind of only just focused my attention trying to do uh, comedy and everything was just comedy, comedy, comedy. I guess, you know, with Goliath and Goliath, our company, that's all it was centered around. And, but I was never really fulfilled. And yeah, I somehow yeah. convinced myself that, um, I can't be posting anything else and changing the narrative because that's going to confuse people, which is such a weird thing to say. That and is interesting, what, yeah. Yeah, it's very strange, man. But what the lockdown taught me, and Anele actually said this very well. She said, it looks like the captivity gave you freedom. Ooh. Hey, man, like, Damn, Ooh. That's, so, that's so true, you know, because yeah. the rules were taken away. And Ooh. this just gave me an opportunity now to just express myself and just put things out there, you know. And for the longest time, I always thought that the one thing was mm. comedy. But I think my one thing is creativity. Comedy yes. just happens to put in to one of those slots, you know. And uh, it's, it's been so liberating, bruh, you know, just getting up and making whatever. Mm. You know, as long as it's fun, funny, and creative, if I'm ticking any of those boxes, then it's You're okay. <laughs> These are the things I like, you know? So, well, yeah. I just wanted to say, that's an interesting idea that you just brought up of kind of the focus on the one thing. And I think that phrase, I'm not completely against it, but it almost feels like focus on one thing and then move on. Because I think there's a power in reinvention, if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, like, absolutely. like it, it is good to hone your craft, but then after that, go ahead and, and, and try something else. What do you think of that idea? No, no, absolutely. I, I, I agree with that. I mean, I think uh, Donald Glover um, is a great example of that. That's exactly mm. what he does. He's mm. like, I'm committing, I don't know, three or four years to just music, but I'm going to be one of the best at this thing. And once he feels like he's, he's reached his peak, he's like, I'm out. We're going we're gonna to make a series now, you know, and that's what he does. <laughs> And I like that, man. You know, I think I think what that does is it takes away this concept of um, time. Mm -hmm. You know that you have to have achieved certain things within a specific time. Um, you know, by thirty, you must have done this. You must have done that. And you know, the people out there are like, "Nah, bro, <laughs> just enjoy <laughs> life." If you feel like this thing's not working and you could be better somewhere else, and this thing is going to be amazing for you, then go there. Yeah. You know, sure. like there are no rules. Nobody decides, especially if you're a freelancer, you know, Ooh. you're the boss. You must decide, you know, how, how you want this, uh, this book to unfold. But I think it's interesting. I think everything kind of has unwritten rules. And I was thinking about this today. You know, I was listening to, I know you're a big fan of Wu-Tang. Um, yeah. And I thought I was a fan of Wu-Tang too. And then I listened to Wu-Tang forever. And I was like, there's a lot of stuff here that, I'm, that I don't remember so fondly. <laughs> like, but, oh, for real, but, but it's interesting, in, in one of the intros, Rizzo off top is like, this is what hip-hop should be. None of this dressing up, none of this whatever. What do you think of this idea that sometimes industries create these unwritten or unsaid rules that people within them are su su supposed to subscribe to? Like, Because that's a bit weird, right? That is very weird, man. Um, and there are a lot of industries like that. In fact, there's a great... Um, documentary that came out in like 2009 2010 mm. it's called influencers it's a short oh. it's a short documentary it's like 15 minutes right and that's sure. before that term became 
it's, it's, it's pretty watered down and washed out right now. You know, if you say the word yeah, influencer, yeah. there's too many negative connotations centered around that. But what yeah. that documentary was about before Instagram and all of these things was about guys who sort of changed the game within their industries. So mm. Jay Z was a very like it's a he's a hot topic in that documentary. They keep coming back to Jay Z and simple mm. things is like somebody to come out and be so powerful within their industry yeah. and make something as simple as the Yankee cap famous. Ooh, the fitted. Yes, you wear yeah. that. You wear that in a specific way. People think Jay Z automatically. That's that's so strong, you know, and that's so powerful and. I like this idea that, um, you know, and, and I'm a big fan of, of following the guys who go left. Like one of my favorite rappers right now is uh, Tobe Nwigwe. You know Tobe? Ooh, tell us he's more. A, he's a Nigerian. Oh, send, oh, this guy is amazing, man. He's a Nigerian yeah. uh, born rapper based in Texas who used to be, used to play football, actually. And got, he got injured and then sure. started, he just started rapping, you know? Um, but he raps and directs all his music videos as well, but everything is super stylized. So True. imagine this big dude, like he's quite hard, you know, but yeah, like yeah. with a Wes, Wes Anderson type setting. Oh, aesthetic, that like that symmetry, yeah, yeah, yeah. color palettes. Like, and... like simple color palettes, symmetry, like very slow camera movement. It's incredible, you know? And I watch this and I'm like, man, this is the kind of stuff that stops me in my tracks right now. This is a guy who goes, ah, I see the template of hip hop, you know, mm. but everybody's trying to play in that template. And I just, I don't want to be a guy who starts from the bottom and I'm going up against all of these dudes and I got to prove myself up the chain before I get recognized. It's sure. better for me to kind of go left and really just put out what I like, you know, the stuff that mm. makes me happy. So when I see it played, on wherever if somebody like tags me in it you know i go damn okay fine so if somebody actually appreciates this stuff so it's once again it's taken me a very long time to 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 find those people because we get sucked into um templates I, have you seen a documentary the hip-hop documentary on uh on netflix um the what's it called? Evolution. Hip -hop evolution. yes where they yes, speak I about love that. i love that so much the New York episode for me was so powerful because, mm. in fact, RZA, I think, actually speaks about it there. Where So Brooklyn, Nas, Biggie, they were the guys. They had a style, you know? So the, part, yeah. in, yes, so the homies in Staten Island go, um, okay, Sharp, in order for us to stand out, we've got to come up with a whole different thing. And that particular <laughs> episode showed that, bro. Like, let me look at the guys from the South. They have a completely different style, but they are sure. as powerful as the homies in Brooklyn versus now where everybody's trying to do the exact same thing just to get a little bit of hype. Back then, in order to stand out, you forced yourself to be different, but you kind of, you rammed it down people's throats as much as you could. So sure. production quality was on par, but the ideas and the aesthetic and the textures were different, mm. which made it interesting, you know? And I think we've kind of, I don't know. It, it might be because of social media and the fact that we're being exposed by so many things right now, and that in order to stand out, you just kind of give people, you know, what they like know. Already out there. Yeah, I mean, trap music is testament to that, I guess. But yeah, dude, like I'm a I'm a big fan of following the guys who are willing to try something different and challenge the so-called rules. Whoever makes the rules. Well, I mean, for me, that's interesting because I think what's hard for a lot of people is like. Is committing to an idea, you know, or believing in your idea. Yeah. I think it's really hard when you have a vision that maybe isn't or doesn't exist in front of you and you're the only one pushing it to be steadfast and believe in yourself. Like how much Absolutely. of that is important in believing Look, in what you're making and creating? That's why it, it took something like the lockdown for me to put out what I'm putting right now because it's exactly that thing. I have no mm. reference. There's no other... <laughs> <laughs> comedian out there who was like hey let me i do all of these other things as well you know and i can make this and i can make that there was nobody so you're the guy who's setting the trend which is scary bro it's scary yeah. to be that guy because you know, i mean once again i'm gonna use coconut Kells as an example you know mm. she started putting stuff out 
And people misinterpreted it because they didn't know that this was satire. So yeah, they she totally missed getting, the train. And they dragged her and said the worst things to her. And she was on the verge of giving up. Like she told me, she's like, hey, man, and I was this close to giving up because this stuff hurt. You know, nobody was seeing mm. my vision and what I was trying to put out. <laughs> because it was never, it's never been done in South Africa before, that kind of thing, you know. Sure. Um, yeah, it's 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 not it. I mean, you know, when you speak to somebody, they're just like, no, you read all of these things and they say, uh, you just believe in yourself, believe in your idea. <laughs> it's that, no, uh, it's it's not that simple. This thing is very difficult, especially now when you know keyboard warriors or keyboard gangsters are, are sure. gonna come at you. Um, every time you put stuff out, it's it's so difficult to just, I guess, put, try and put something original out there, not even original, something that's all you. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's so funny to me, like, because believe in yourself is, is like these, these tropes of advice yeah. that people give. Like, um, what was the one I was thinking of in lockdown? Like, you're only as good as your last gig. Then you're like, no, man, I was great. <laughs> I was great for a long time. Why, we, why are we not counting yeah. all those other thousands of times? Yeah. That's unfair. Like, what do you think of like that pop kind of psychology that people use to, to, help people along the way they're like ah believe in yourself you can do it you are the the maker of your own destiny right dude you know there were there was a time when uh, they, i guess in the in the in early stages you know when you're desperate you start following those accounts that you know on instagram that have quotes <laughs> <laughs> you know if i if i read this stuff every day you know i think i'll i'll get there but then you you slowly start to realize no man you know a lot of the stuff doesn't appeal to me and one of my favorite things is um, what is her name? Ariana Huffington, where of she came out. Post. Yeah, she 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 came out and she spoke about. Like, I think somebody asked her, like, what is the what is the secret to success? How do you build a Huffington Post? And she said, you know what? I know that there are a lot of people reading this, uh, wait, sitting there waiting, you know, for some yeah. for some things that you're. She's gonna tell us, you know, if you drink green tea and you meditate every day. And all she said was. <laughs> Hey, just sleep, guys. Forget this sleep when you're dead nonsense, you know? <laughs> like, you need to sleep. Just rest. <laughs> You'll I'm figure it out. Yeah. It's like, stop listening to people who say, oh, I, I worked, you know, uh, 20 hours a day to get to my million. No, that was you. Uh, your body, my body is not built like that. I need my eight hours. That's all she said. It's like the best advice I can give you. Just sleep, yo. Just uh, rest when you need to rest. You pick it up tomorrow. Life is, yes, things move fast, but it is also very long. You know, you'll figure this out. If you really want to, you'll get to where you're going. But just to stop reading like all of these things. You know what? What I would say for those things, pick one. Yeah. Pick one. If you go, yeah. Believe if you, if you go, uh, I mean, my dad always told me, like, be yourself. Mm -hmm. That is the most open ended thing you could say to somebody. You know? <laughs> Like, what does that even mean? <laughs> be yourself. Okay, yeah. Because for a lot of people, yeah, you mustn't be yourself, eh? Maybe. Hey, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Was, as you yeah. said, I was like, ooh, that's not. I've seen people yeah. be themselves and I've unfriended them on Facebook. Yes. But it also <laughs> took me a very long time to understand what that means, you know. I guess sure. as you get older, you figure out certain traits, certain qualities about yourself. Uh, comedy, I guess, you know, trying to find your voice in comedy. I think that's a, that's an interesting lesson for us where the stories that you enjoy telling, you know, the, the way you react to, you know, after you've told that story, if you've got a, a, a laugh that sure. just comes out naturally. I think that's the thing that separates you then from everybody else. And, um, I guess that's how you start to unpack what be yourself actually means is just, just love, bro. <laughs> you don't need to. You don't need to put on an alter ego or a character here to impress people because you're trying to do what you think they want to see. I think I don't know, man. I'm still trying to figure that phrase out. I mean, I mean, that's a, that's I I agree with a lot of what you've said. I mean, I, again, to whoever's watching, like not to not to say don't read motivational quotes. I think there's no, definitely no. value in them. I I just I, I'm trying to figure out what works for you. Oh, so the phrase that I've been hearing a lot is like what serves you and what empowers you, right? Because those are the things that help you. I think we all read stuff and some of it works for us yeah. and some of it doesn't. But but then it brings a bigger point. How is important? How important is it to know who you are in all of this chaos in the world that you exist in? Yo, 
Um, you know, uh, once again, I'm going to use this lockdown as an example because I can safely mm. say that I think this lockdown has finally exposed who I really am. You know, interesting, yeah, and it has. Because I I feel free, man. I feel liberated when I just make whatever. Because that's what I like to do, you know. I mean, I want to even make music. Like, I I might not know the software, but I've got the sure. idea in my head that I want to play with. But I'm going to collaborate with somebody so we can actually make this thing happen. Because I need to release it. I need to get it out before I move mm. on to the next thing. Otherwise, it just sits there. You know, it's like a cabinet that just keeps piling and. And, and, you know, you get turgor pressure eventually, and I just don't want you to explode. I want to control it. Um, and, yeah, I mean, your question was, how, how important is it to... Know thyself, really. That's the real one, because that's the difficult one. I think it's, it's... I think we consume stuff around us, which is good. You know, people give us information, yeah. insights, and sometimes it can distort how we really perceive the world because we're just repeating what everyone else is saying. Like, how important yeah. is it to figure you know, out what and, it is that they want, you know? There's a... Do you know Austin Kleon? Mm -mm. Tell us more. Great author um, who has a series, his book, the one that shot him to fame, is called Steal Like an Artist. And oh, I've read it. I might even have yes, that. I'm sure oh, you yeah. have. Yeah, I'm sure you've read it. But you know what I like about that analogy? I think reading that book is a good yeah. step in finding out who you are. Because what Steel Like an Artist is about is he basically says nothing is original in the world. Nothing. Sure. Everything's been done. You know, yeah. even Picasso was inspired by other artists to create what we know as Picassos. And what he says is that Somebody like, and I, I thought about this a lot, you know, and he's like, when you're trying to create something original, yeah. uh, the, the first part is, trying, is, is understanding, uh, you know, what it is that you like. So if I'm going to use, um, let's say, design as an example, sure. yeah. I know what kind of design I like, right? So we'll start with minimalism. I love minimalism when it comes to yeah, design. Yeah. In design then within that i've got my favorites sorry yeah you want to say something i was gonna say dude like i like minimalism as a design principle but it also just became like co-opted by corporate like there was a point yeah. like a year ago where every restaurant menu looked the same like it was yeah. from a craft restaurant then you're like hey man is this are you paying one guy at fiverr to design all of these yeah things? <laughs> it's exactly <laughs> right so what happens then is, and, and his theory is, okay, cool, you like this aesthetic, but within that aesthetic, who are the people that you admire, right? Mm. So you go, uh, one of my favorite illustrators, Guy Ballou, you know, sure. who does a French artist illustrator who I learned about when I was studying in first year. And I couldn't understand at the time why I was so drawn to it. But it's yes, all yes. these like, visual puns, no copy, just visual puns in his in his illustrations, you know, things that... It's like very juxtaposed worlds, and I love that, right? Yeah. And then I like somebody like Saul Bass, who r pretty much reinvented movie posters, like completely oh, all illustrated, weird, right? Mm. Then I'll go and like somebody like, uh, let's find somebody. Um, so the agency, this is Collins, who redesigned Spotify, for example, and you can see their aesthetic. So... Yeah. What Austin Cleon says is what you need to do then to create something original is take the things that you like from all of those people mm. to create you and what you like. So I think the first step in knowing thyself is actually sitting down and figure, figuring out what it is that you like. Because he also says that, so somebody like Kanye, you can, you can often Bless see- Bless him, Kanye he's going through the most. Like. Yes. And I, I mean, I, some, I, I never know if I should ever use Kanye as an example going forward, but I think he's a good example. Sure. Kanye is one of his favorites, you know. Um, he clearly went through the Michael Jackson phase, but like a specific, I mean, there's a great YouTube channel where this guy explains how Kanye's music videos, the cinematic nature of Kanye's music videos actually come from Michael Jackson, because that's what Michael did when oh, he yeah, made, the early days, yeah. Uh, mm. yeah, the one with Scorsese uh, Bad. 
that was that was full on that was so different for the time you know thriller <clears throat> those were short films uh, sure. but he took it there you know um so he says when you start to understand who your heroes are inspired by then you get then you start to figure out the thread then you then you then you'll fully understand what it is that inspires you about your heroes when you sure. figure out who they was sourced their material from and i really like that you know because i think now uh you know in a let's call it the, the content generation like we're churning stuff out all the time but sure. even with in creating content you're trying to find a voice something that sticks when somebody sees something that's been put out before they even hear the audio it automatically clicks you go oh i know who exactly who this is from you know like it has a hook almost yeah you know i mean it's like when you hear a timberland song like in the first oh, 10 yeah. seconds you will know <laughs> that this is timberland this is, yeah. these are his vibes you know and that's what he sticks to that's what he believes in because that's the thing that makes him happy and there's a lot of them dre is the same you know mm. um so yeah dude i think it's really about being a little bit more introspective and blocking out the noise and getting just taking some time off of uh the internet and what you're consuming because i think that can completely block you uh you know because you're taking in so many things like so many nice oh. things and, you know one day you're liking minimalism the next day you're like you know maybe i actually like floral stuff because <laughs> that seems to be great right now. <laughs> when you explore yeah. pages like just basketball yeah. plus art plus uh whatever yeah. you're like hey, i don't know what's happening here i don't know is this me i don't know if this is me. i don't know <laughs> I think we deviated from the original question there but anyway oh, in fact I told you from your first question we were still explaining <laughs> making stuff during the lockdown <laughs> Well that's the thing though I mean is that I think all of us and the thing we sometimes rob ourselves of is is to have fluid careers and experiences right like at some point this thing's going to pop at some point that thing's going to pop Yeah. But but it's like just take them as they come and enjoy that process. I think what yes. I wanted to actually talk about and you mentioned earlier was the idea of having fun. Like yeah. how that is something that should dominate your creative experience. Yes. If that element is taken away, then it becomes work. Mm. I'm not going to lie to you. So when we started uh Davina and I, when we started making stuff online, you know, we started with those those covid fashion posters that we put mm-hmm. out that became a hit you know it got sure. attention globally and that was like whoa and we just did that in jay for fun there was no brief there was no expectation yes. um <laughs> we were like isn't it weird that that we're all dressing the same during this time you know um and then there's no judgments like if you post a picture of yourself wearing a gown and slippers and mismatched socks and your hair is crazy it's like yeah man i'm going through the same thing so we were like what if we shoot this uh, but we juxtapose it with like mm. a fashion brand because we also spoke about how the vanity aspect of social media especially instagram had changed so you weren't yeah. seeing people you know flossing because nobody could be outside you know so <laughs> what if we we brought that to the platform but in a completely different light like speaking to the times So that became a campaign for us and we just started putting a lot of that stuff out we're just making things hey yeah. bra and it took us a lot of posts maybe 20 or so before the first brand knocked and said yo <laughs> we see that you guys are making stuff uh, we want to sure. collaborate with so we did that, it it was so fun yeah i was going to say like that's that's cuz you know what happens i think to a lot of people is that it becomes more about the loot the yes. actual act of making the thing and that's where yes. it gets really tricky. Yes, which leads me to my next point. Um so the first brand comes on, you know, I think it was VW and we just make this thing at home. Mm. Um dope, we enjoyed it. The second one comes, you know, and they start coming in hard and fast. Now there are expectations and there are hard <laughs> deadlines and there's money attached <laughs> to it. So you start putting value to the idea. Oh, so they've paid you this much. Now you sit and yeah. you go Ish. No man, I can't I can't just shoot this thing <laughs> in my backyard on my cell phone. Oh, they 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 never going to like this. Now you start to overthink it uh because you the fun gets taken out. Now it's work again, 
you know, yeah. which is one of the reasons why I left advertising um, because comedy is play, you know, it's a lot of fun. And one of the reasons why I don't think I could do a, a one man show online because yeah. I just don't think it would, it, it would, it just wouldn't be fun for me. You know I mean? Like myself, Jason uh, and Nicholas have done it as a trio. And I, I guess I, I'm just overthinking it that way. Maybe not. I don't know. I might be overthinking it, but it's, that's, that's exactly what started happening to us. It, like we started yeah. getting all of these deadlines, more and more people started jumping on it, you know, and uh, you start to overthink it. Every idea you come up with now, you put a value to it. You start to question the aesthetic of how you do the stuff. And, um, you know, you start to ask yourself, yes, it's like my audience that I've built online doing the stuff organically. Are they going to be like, ah, he needs well, even that's, even that's like a bizarre thing that we've had to start thinking about, like organic. What is or, like nothing exactly. like everything is marketed, dude. Like even if yeah. you do a show, it's not just something somebody picked up on the street then they're like ah did you see donovan's got a special it's yeah, like so the exactly. idea of organic even that's really weird you know yeah and and it's 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 i think it's weird it's like a weird imposter syndrome um you know you start to you start to imagine uh what the consumers would think about this which is so weird you know because yeah. when we started doing the stuff in the first place we didn't we didn't care what the consumers thought we were just like hey man let's just let this thing go and see what happens it's that fishing thing again you know, sure. and now recently we've kind of just gone, ah, you know what? Um, we're going to have to start turning things down that we know are going to mess our energy because <laughs> the moment one messes your energy, everything else now starts to crumble. So I'm just trying to protect it as much as, 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 as I can. I mean, but at sure. the end of the day, we're still in a pandemic. There's still anxieties that you're dealing with, you know, so that little mm -hmm. bit of positive energy that you have, you can't th let that be sucked dry because uh, a bank <laughs> has told you, ah, we don't like this. You need to <laughs> tell people she's, about the car. rewrites now and shit. Yeah, and then I'm like, no, man, this, this is not what it was supposed to be like, guys. This is this is weird, you know? So, That's so funny, yeah. That, like, it, it, that that push and pull is is easier under different circumstances. Yeah. Absolutely, but going back to the fun element of it, dude, the moment you take that away, and I think the audience sees it as well. I guess comedy <laughs> is the same. You know, if you're like up there and you're trying too hard and it just doesn't feel natural, when it looks like you're not having fun, ah, yes. nah, they just like, ah. Because oh, you get, have you, ever, have you ever seen guys who go up on stage and like the, the gags are whack? But the guy is having the best time. It's so <laughs> confusing. Man. It's just like, why do you like me? It's just like, okay, okay, let's let's go again. Okay. Then the audience, you you find the audience speaks about that. Where is that guy? That guy looks like he was he was feeling this thing, you know. And With I felt the good energy. I don't know. It happens not all the time. I mean, it's, never, yeah. It's there are definitely those moments of like where things work out. I mean, I'll be honest. I'll take the guy with the good gags who's having a shit time. Oh yeah, yeah. And the guy no, who's bombing with a smile. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Anyway, <laughs> I was gonna ask about uh, you were talking about music earlier, and I know yeah. back in the day you used to rap, dog. Um, yes. What is it about like growing up in I guess the era of hip hop that we grew up in, where people just had really bizarre, violent rap names it was always like oh. mc keela or death to mike like it was such a strange thing but it's the because we grew up in an era of murder music because if ah. you listen to a lot of the, the lyric the lyrical content and what what people were saying it was always just a challenge you know yeah I'll, I'll kill you if you step on my shoes <laughs> like no why though it's, Relax, you know, Relax. Yeah. and all of those guys. This is hectic, bro. I think that's that's why. Because I mean, yeah. my name, my rap name was Acid Rain. Jesus Christ! And, that's yeah, so intense. my my uh, uh, there were three of us in the group, so it was Acid Rain. It was Peeps the villain, and uh, that dog. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, that third one is just like that person sounds yeah. fed up there's, there's no 
particular dog, it's that dog. That's oh. what it was. Oh, that's fine. Now, I, used to, I used to draw all the posters for us back then. Because um, sure. we used to form at like the beauty pageants in Amtata. Mr. and Mr. Amtata at different schools. We were invited and we only had like three songs. But we were there. And <laughs> we would dress up in full camo <laughs> and go and perform. And it was hard, bro. Like, you know, gangster. <laughs> so our, oh, our group was called Outbreak. As outbreak, well. so, oof! Outbreak. Oh, that didn't age well. Yeah, it, we should have started that group now. Then it, that would. <laughs> <laughs> it was called Outbreak, and the posters were so violent. Now that I think about it, because I would draw myself acid rain, where yeah. half of my body had melted away, and you could just see <sighs> my skeleton sticking through, but the arm where the skin had melted off was holding the mic, of course. Oh, I could see that already. <laughs> That's fire. <laughs> and then Peeps the villain uh, carried two guns like this, and he always had this. He was the gangster, big-ass chain, you know? Yeah. And then that dog was a guy <laughs> with a dog face and a human body. That was it. That was that dog. <laughs> That's That was the aesthetic, That's, you know? That's so, so bizarre. No, bruh. It's uh, it was it was heavy back then, bro. It was heavy back I mean, then. It, it's it's so interesting, like because a lot of people were rappers or had a phase where they wanted to rap. Like, where first of all, someone asked, "Was was he related to two dogs?" That's a very inside comedy joke. Yes, yes. <laughs> but but I'm trying to figure out, like, what were we thinking in those rap phases? Like, like what was the goal, right? Because now, if you rap, you can be like, "I want to be like Travis Scott." Yeah. I want to be like. Drake, yeah, yeah. I don't even like J. Cole. Like, who were the heroes back then? So the heroes back then, for me and Miguel, who still raps to this day. In fact, I'm going to send yeah. you a mixtape yeah. or this or his EP. Oof, fire, fire, fire. Um, Sons of Man, Wu Tang, Ruthless Bastards, wow. Smith and Wesson. Wow. Uh, who else? Yeah, bro. So cannabis, you raucous know, records, there. lyricist lounge. Raucous. Yes, you know. So that's the vibe. Hard, dude. Like hard. Um, that was the. That was. Those were the heroes. You know. Um, obviously, in South Africa, cashless society. Um, Dukes. Um, Squatter camp. Else? Squatter camp, of course. You mm. know, all of those zubs. Uh, those guys were the heroes back then. And uh, I'll never forget the one day um, we were at a shopping mall called Circus Triangle in Umtata. Wait, wait, what? Wait, hold up. What? It's called Circus Triangle. And the top of it <laughs> looks like a circle tent. That's the shopping mall. That was like the first big shopping mall we got. <laughs> so, oh, wow. Myself and Miguel were at Circus Triangle. I don't even know what we were doing there. And we come outside into the parking lot and there was a Coca-Cola truck there. And okay. had this MC and basketball was still big in Amtata at the time. Remember when, when we had that basketball show that Scoop used to host? Oh, yeah, that was day. huge, huh? Yeah. So basketball was quite a thing in Amtata. Miguel used to play basketball as well. So we at Circus Triangle, we walk into the parking lot, we see this Coke truck. There's some whack MC there, um, you know, nah, trying to hype people up. Anyway, we move closer, closer, closer. Then we recognize this one dude who says, yo, are you guys jumping on? So we're like, what? what? Like, no, no, no. Like, they, they're doing this competition here. Um, you know, people just keep getting up and, like, like dropping bars and singing and stuff. But, like, everybody's been whack. Um, and the same guy that's telling us, <laughs> he's like, yeah, you know, like, I sing as well. But I've got this problem with my throat. So I'm drinking these three vials, you know, that just clear out <laughs> all of the stuff. <laughs> what elixir are you talking about? Like... <laughs> This is 1990, 1996. Right? What are you saying? Wow. Oh, I got to drink daily, you know, because it just clears me out. But I'm on my way to becoming an R&B singer, but I don't want to ruin my vocal <laughs> cords now. So I think you guys should jump on. So we we're like, all right, cool, we'll jump on. But everywhere we went, we carried this cassette that just had like beats. Like on. your tape. Like, it was your yes, tape. We, yes. But we had that tape. But then we also had another tape with instrumentals that we had just copied from, you know, we buy CD singles and we just copy the instrumental of the Nas, yeah. whoever it was, <laughs> right? 
And so we had it. So we had written to all of these beats. Hey, so we like, this guy's like, yo, 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 who's next? Who's next? So we were like, ah, we'll go next. So we go up on stage and they give us these oversized basketball vests, bro. Like this thing is like <laughs> down to my almost like they were Sprite vests. Yo, and we play this tape, we go on and we kill it. Bah! It's right. like, it was huge, bro. Then the, the white guy, the boss of this whole thing, he was the only white guy there. He didn't know what was happening, you know. He comes <laughs> out and, Yo, this, uh, this was incredible, eh? This is... Uh, <laughs> Yes, this is amazing. You know, we didn't expect to find rappers here in Umtata. And uh, you know what? We're going we're gonna to actually, we're going to take you guys. We're going to take you guys around the country. You're going to be massive. And we believed it. <laughs> so wow. they told us. <laughs> you were selling dreams, dog. No, he, we believed it, right? Like, no, Coca-Cola, this is what Coca-Cola is about. You know, we're all about taking people and, you know, growing, uh, you know, young stars, etc. cetera, et cetera. Yo, dude. And I was just like, oh, man, this is it. You know, if my parents ask me what I'm going to study, I'm like, study? <laughs> I got four. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm going there. I'm going to be there with Wu-Tang. What are you even saying? So these you know guys told crazy, us crazy, dude? You just reminded yeah. me, like, there was a phase when all I wanted was to be on Rap Activity Jam. That's it. That's it. Nothing yeah. else. Not not to have a deal. Not to sell millions of records. I just wanted to be on Rap Activity Jam with Oskido and Root Boy Paul. And I forget who else was there. Bro, do you know what I wanted to be on? One, Jam Alley, right? <laughs> that was a huge thing for me. Two, which was Big <laughs> Dreams. Big Dreams was The Basement. That used to play what on Rap that? City BET. You don't know oh, the basement? Yeah. Yo, bruh. That was that was my show, bruh. That for me, that was the same way people feel about watching a Game of Thrones episode now. Is how I felt watching the basement. I was, was like, big not, Tigger. Not, big Tigger. Yes, Big Tigger was the guy. And I told Miguel, we'll get there, boy. Two more tracks, and we'll be on that show. No problem. That that's so crazy. Will, <laughs> will take us across the globes. <laughs> I was gonna ask, dude, what do you think happened to like that? Like hip hip hop is so interesting in how it evolves, you know. And I think other genres are gonna maybe find themselves with the same growing pains that hip hop has gone through, right? Like yeah. in its popularization, a new group of people join, it becomes more accessible, but it really changes so fast that after a while. It's really hard to keep up with what the thing is. Like, do you think that's yes. inevitable of any popular genre? Or it's that's just a hip hop thing. No, bro. I think it's inevitable with anything. Eh? Mm. Um, and 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 once again, chatting to Miguel, we were we were we were going through his EP, and I was saying, "Damn, you got such interesting sounds here. This is not like I know your style and I know what you're into, uh, but you've you've got a lot of like new textures um, and like sonically, it yeah. sounds yeah. different, you know." And he just he just says he said something so interesting, man. He's like, you know, dude, you, you really have to learn to appreciate <clears throat> and consume everything. Like he says, I might not be a big fan of trap music, but I have mm. to understand why trap music exists, you know, uh. and what it is sonically about it that makes people. I mean, it's like art, you know, art yeah. is the exact same thing. We've seen it change through the ages. Um, and if I go like I like the era of hip hop that I grew in. Yes, but I really wasn't a fan. I'm not saying I'm. I'm definitely not a fan of the boom bap era. <laughs> you know, back then when. Yeah. yeah okay. Okay. Sure. <laughs> and I can imagine the generation that came after that were like, "No man, the the boom bap guys were like, what is this? This, this, this <laughs> makes this makes no sense." Then gangster rap comes in, and then those homies are like, "Guys, what are we saying? Why are we?" <laughs> Why are we killing people now? You know, we were dressed in spandex. It was colorful. We had platforms on. Why are we killing people all of a sudden? So I guess it just has its time. You know, Diddy comes along and then rap gets shay, but I'll give this one to you for 180. And he's like, Zana, listen to what you are saying. <laughs> listen to what you are saying. <laughs> 180,000 rand. Ay, 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 ay. No, no. It's tackies. How can tackies be that? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I was like, you know, once again, wet. Because mm. if you think of somebody like Daniel Asham, who's a sculptor, a colorblind cat. Yes. 
So Daniel mm. Osham, who's a doctor who's colorblind, uh, collaborates with Adidas, creates a set of sneakers that are reminiscent of the textures he uses in his sculptures, but are all mm. muted tones. All you're buying is a Daniel Asham sculpture. It just happens to be a sneaker. That's the canvas, you know? Yeah. And it's the same thing with the Christian Dior thing. Um, you're buying, who's the, is it Rick Owens? Who's the Christian Dior creative director now? Not Rick. Who, who, who is it? Who is I'll it? have a look now. To Rick Owens' vision. Not so much, oh, they slapped a logo onto it. I mean, I don't per like it personally, but yes. I can see why. You know, Virgil, I think, is a great is a great example of that as well. You know, you're buying Virgil. Some of Virgil's yeah. stuff, I'm like, yeah, and then I'm like, no, 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 no you no. just put a tag here, man. It's uh, Did you see the, the the thing he did for Drake? Drake's uh, no. private jet. No. He, Drake puts his thing out saying, yeah, Virgil designed my private jet. And all <laughs> he did was, in, in his quotation marks, if you're reading this, We've already left or whatever. Then I'm like, oh my goodness. is it design? Oh, is no. it design? I mean, did you see Virgil's cover he did for Pop Smoke? I heard everybody was upset. I didn't even look at the original, uh, but I heard oh, the I community was mad. Oh, big what, mad. what was great and why I love social media is, and I knew that that was going to happen. So people, he puts this thing out, you know, and, yeah. you know, everybody was like, no, fam. No, no, no. <laughs> and then somebody was like, puts <laughs> <this> thing <laughs> but then, <laughs> And then started they created a thread and it was if if virgil designed iconic um hip-hop oh. album covers so they took oh, no. all the ones that you know <laughs> and just did it in word art bruh <laughs> no virgil is really tricky bruh like and you know the the unfortunate thing about virgin with people is yeah. it's all hype you know the True. hype throws virgil up and unfortunately, they are consumers and people who, who don't know why they like it, but just yes. because Virgil did it, it, it must be dope. Like, why, why are we arguing this, guys? It's Virgil. And I'm like, no. I mean, no. it does feel like, I can see sometimes it feels like a stamp of approval at some point. Um, and uh, the designer is Raph Simmons, who also has, Raph. yo, there's a Raph Simmons Stan Smith, dude, that is like, I don't know uh, how much it is, but it's a crazy price. And I've always wanted them, but I'm like, yo, 400 quid. Because you can never find it. Is it the one where, where the, the, the stripes are just the R? Yeah, the you know the one. Yeah, that was exact. Right. I'm, like, I'm like, these are so dope. But damn, I don't know if I could pay um, this loot for this sneaker. But it's interesting because this week was this whole saga about fake sneakers. What do you yes. think? Because I think there's, there's we've we've become... I mean, I like sneakers. I'm not going to lie. I, I bought like Jordan yeah. 11 breads just before this lockdown. Yes. I think there's a, a certain kind of status that comes with clothing and material things. Yeah. And sometimes people are willing to cop the 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 not original thing just because it has the look. Do you care about fake sneakers? You know, someone just said you can get 200 Rand uh, Virgil Abloh's for uh, in Marabastat. Like, what's the <laughs> point? If it looks the same, why not just go for the thing? You know, 1800, some people are saying even. I can't, bruh. Personally, I can't. And I'll tell you why I can't. <laughs> you know, when I was growing up, you know, the dopest yeah. sneaker I had growing up was a pair of North Star Excitements. Remember those? Oh, wow. wow. They mean like Lumo Yellow and Lumo Orange. And if you had True. those, yo, bruh. And you know what's weird? In 2009, I was in Cape yeah. Town. I went to Shelf Life and they had a pair of North Star Excitements there. Oh wow! Good stock, but they were. I and I, yeah, you know, I just couldn't afford them. But right? it was like two nine, you know. And I was working in advertising and just wasn't making enough money. But I needed them, and it was the ones I had when I was a lighty. And I'll kick myself <laughs> forever for not buying those things, right? So, growing up, you know, that was like probably the dopest sneak I had. But yeah. now I'm, I also wanted Jordans. I also wanted. Um, Adidas's and all of these things and it took me a very long time to own a nice pair of sneakers and I always told myself that this was going to be my thing you know, no matter what happens <laughs> you know, when I start <laughs> making money I'll never buy a fake sneaker, I need to buy the real thing just to fulfill that void for many years where everywhere I went, people were like ah, excitements again hey, like hey, it's the you know, buy, like Yo, yeah. dude, uh, come on, man. <laughs> Why? Let me leave. Why are you doing this? Please. 
Then I got a pair of LA gear lights. Wow. And that's when I was like, hey, these things, are, it, this is a powerful thing. Was. You know when you have a pair of sneakers on and you go to school on service day wearing LA gear lights, now you're taking people to like the dark alleys so they can actually see. <laughs> The dark part of the panya, panya. That's so funny. So, and then you're like, you're oh, fit to come in. You became that guy with the LA gear lights, you know. So for me, bro, it's really just, I, I, I could never purchase. I don't buy it <laughs> because it's a Jordan 1. I don't buy it yeah. because it's Ben Smith and Jay. I'm not going to pay um, 200 bucks for it. I'm going to buy it because it's nostalgic for me and it means mm. a lot. So I look at my sneaker collection and a lot of it is quite retro inspired. I like sure. the old classic silhouettes, you know, mm. I don't like the new futuristic tech stuff. Like I like the classics, like Jordans for me, the only ones I like are ones, you know, and that's okay. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm a fan of Stan Smith's. Um, I'm a fan of like old school New Balance silhouettes only sure. because I used to see these things in the source in Vibe magazine, I wow. see these guys rocking these sneakers, and I, I, I like. I actually convinced myself that I'd never be able to afford <laughs> these. I could never. I'm, I'm never gonna like have dope sneakers in my life. So sure. that's why now, I'll if I see it, I'll I'll do what it takes. You know, whatever it takes to to Payback. get it. I mean, it feels like a revenge. Yeah, mission. <laughs> I mean, you know, there's a there's a time that I I completely regret, and it it like I grew up. Well, I started earning money just a little bit too late. Sure. You know, I started earning a little earlier. And yeah. I missed out on ice creams. The vape oh, ice cream. Vape. Era. Oh, the vape star. Brah. You know, and you'll never find vapes now, <laughs> ever. Oh. Um, and I just couldn't. I just didn't have the resources for that particular era. And I, every time I see a pair of vape stars, I'm like, ah, oh, god damn it. <laughs> I'm sure yeah. Reebok, don't Reebok make a version of them? I don't know, man. I don't know. But, you know, like Pharrell back then, when it was just like still like, that's all they spoke about. Ice um, cream, BBC. Ice cream. When Clips, Pharrell, Nigo, obviously, all of these homies were rocking ice creams. It was BBC everything. I was like, mm. man. One day, it's one day. And then they <laughs> stopped. <laughs> then they stopped. Yes, sis. Yeah, dude, bro. So I, it's really just all nostalgia for me, man. Dude, I mean, you just reminded me. I, I was in London once. I, I stumbled on the, onto the BBC store in Soho, maybe. It might have been yeah. actually on a trip that we went on. Yeah, yes, we were um, there together. Yeah, we, we were shooting a castle ad. Yes. Um, and, I, and I stumbled into the store and I was just like, oh, no, this is not in my tax bracket. Let me let me walk out of it. I'll show myself out. Thank, thank you, sir. I'll show myself. Yeah, out. no, no, no. You know, it's those stores where when you walk in, they're like, "Yo, yo, what up, man?" But then they look at you. They look at what you're wearing. <laughs> then already they've gone. Just let him go. Look, it's fine. <laughs> there was a store like that in PE when I was still studying in PE. Now there was a store mm. called Delbro. I think it's still there. Delbro sure. was like the. That was the store that they always had the latest stuff back then. Uh, the dope sneaker was Nike Shocks. You know those Nikes that had those oh, shocks? Oh, yeah, I hated those. I've hated those since I, I was a kid. Forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was like, they were the first ones to have it. That's the only place you could get it, those vibes. They had the latest stuff. You walk into Delbro, bro, and you know, you, I'm still studying. Now you, with the homies and you walk, you walk past, you look at the window, the guy comes out, he's like, yo, what up, uh, fellas? Um, I can give you a good deal. But he's looking at what you're wearing and then he goes, <laughs> But it's fine. Everything we have inside is in the window. It's okay. You can just look here. <laughs> you know, you know what I did. But I, I'm so petty. Um, I think yeah. Five years after that, so I yeah. finished studying, go and I work, and I had to go back to PE for something. <laughs> I made a point to go to Delbro, and I walked in. I bought three pairs of shoes. That, no, like uh... I liked them. I liked <laughs> them. I didn't love them. You know. I like them, but I was like, oh, no. one day, it's one day. I'm coming back here, guys. I'm coming back. You, there's no way you're going to look at me like this again. Yeah, yeah. Those guys broke my soul <laughs> bro, completely. Can you imagine telling me, though, everything we have is here in the window. You guys don't have to come. 
you that's such an expensive it. middle finger, dog. That's such an expensive like way to <laughs> tell someone. <laughs> oh, oh, this is so. You just reminded me um, of like uh, I knew I knew someone who did the same kind of thing. Where if they gave if they gave you a dirty look in the store, yeah. they were just like, "I'm gonna rack this whole thing up and then force the person to help me carry it." Then I was like, oh. I'm sure there's another way to do this. It makes sense, but it, this is a very expensive pursuit. That's, that's so dope, man. But yeah, bro, I think I think with with people of color in general, you know, asking anybody that question about why would you pay so much for this thing? Like, Baba, mm. you don't understand. You know, when you're growing up, like aspiration is everything. Like you look sure. up to people whatever media you're consuming and all you want to be is that guy, you know? Like that um, person. Read, yeah, man. I read this great book once. Well, it's not even... Yeah, it's it, it, it's called Marketing Through Mud and Dust by mm. a guy called Kuzi Kuzwayo. And it was all about marketing to people in, in townships and the brands that got it right. So he sure. breaks down... You know that every toothpaste is called Colgate. Yeah. And he explains why. You know, because those were the only brands back then during mm. those times that were allowed to go in. So not every brand was allowed to be sold, you know, in those areas. So that became the, the thing. ShopRite uh, every brand is called a checkers because um, of the branding of that thing. And those that's where black people were meant to shop. So that's all they knew, you know. Mm. So he mm. explains this whole thing, but he does a big breakdown on. Um, why uh, supposedly poor or people in, in, in those areas rather yeah. would spend so much money? Like, why would you buy an Egna pants sure. for 2,000 Rand when your wages are 300 Rand a week? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, it and doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't make sense. You know, like in, in, the, in the real economic world, that is like, the, you, that's bad. You are very bad with yes. money. But this guy's like, yo, man, when I wear this pants, I just want to feel like everybody else. I don't want to go out there and make people think I'm poor. I already have mm -hmm. to live in this environment and I already have to eat and breathe this every single day. Like, give me a chance to experience the so-called wonderful life that you're speaking about, even if it costs 2000 bucks. That's just an investment in a little sure. bit of status for me. And I loved that so much, you know. And I worked on a on a campaign like we had to relaunch Moby Cell. <laughs> oh, the yeah, yeah, the cell phone cats, yeah. Yeah, the cell phone cats. And this guy said something so interesting to me. Um, he said uh, the guy who who was the CEO at the time, because yeah. Moby Cell phones are designed for a lower LSM, sure. um, and they they all come with uh, like dual SIM card. So the analogy behind the dual SIM card thing is that people could switch between networks. So you could switch between Vodacom and, and Cell C who offered specials at different times. So if Vodacom ran until 10 o'clock at night yeah. uh, and rates were specific, whatever they were, but then after That's that, Cell C rates were cheaper, then you'd switch mm. your SIM card to Cell C. So you wouldn't have to take a SIM card out. You just switch it on your phone. But he says yeah. what he did was he went to China and he bought phones that looked expensive so uh, the casing looked like a smartphone yes. but the software was like first generation terrible and he says basic he did a lot of research yeah mm. very very basic so he says he did his research and one of the things that came out is that all people wanted to be able to do was take their phone out when it rings without feeling embarrassed and just put it down on the table and leave wow. it there with the other guys so that you don't, it's, you're not hiding it in your pocket because, sure. you know, people will automatically class you and put you in a box based on mm. the device that you have. And that was the reason behind starting the company. And I was like, damn, man, that's so interesting. So he's like, yeah, I was just trying to create status symbols affordable for people who could never afford the real thing. That's yeah. why I started the company. Damn, I was like, shucks, that's... That's so deep. <laughs> That's, That's wild. So deep. Right? I think, oh, we, I mean, we often don't think about that because, I mean, yeah, you're right. Some of it is just bad expenditure. Like, I've got sneakers yeah. where I'm like, yeah. I, I shouldn't have done this. Obviously, this is dumb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, 
that element of having some kind of dignity, I think, is important, and, and people yearn right. for that, even with like Sunday clothes or whatever. But yeah. the, the the thing I wanted to really talk about that you brought up was nostalgia, because now in these testing times, it seems like that's what we're all yearning for. Why do you think that is? Why do you think everyone's trying to kind of reach for something that reminds them of of, of another time? Um. Wow. You know what, 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 what I found during this time is uh, like compassion mm. has, has, really, um, has really been a big deal for a lot of people. I'm finding a lot more people helping, um, just, <clears throat> you know, providing where they can, which is so great. You know, um, I think we're going back to being human again, mm -hmm. you know, which sounds like such a weird thing to say. We're going back to being human again and just kind of being there for each other. And I think we, because we're, we're, we're locked up in our homes with the things that we have, like you look around and you start to realize, hey, man, there are a lot of things I don't need, hey? like really. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. like us, we're never really at home. So you come home and you, know, you, you, you have a shower, you make yourself some food, you sit in the lounge. Um, there's a there's a great video that that somebody posted once. It was an architect, and mm. he's he's fighting for people to move into smaller spaces because he's just saying that you don't need a lot of people don't use like sixty percent of their homes or something like that. Yeah, so they showed yeah. you these heat maps where, where people actually spend the most time, and he's like, this is all you need. Like you don't need to be you know um, spending so much paper on a on a massive property. Sure. And I think that people now have started this time has allowed them to figure out what they actually need, what mm -hmm. makes them happy. Um, they want to go back to the basics <laughs> a little bit, you know, and I think even with clothes, bro, like yeah. such a, it seems like such a weird <laughs> example, but like I look at a lot of the stuff I have and I'm like, hey man, I I don't need this. Eh? I don't need this at yeah, all. I need this thing. <laughs> no, man, this makes no sense to me. I think that, um, I think that that's what what it's done for us. It's really made made us just stop and look and just go. Well, yeah, I, I liked the. I, I want to go back just to being a nice person. I want to help where I can. Um, sure. I just want to like call my parents up and tell them I love them and just have conversations because I don't yeah. know if I'll ever see them again. So I think it's really put people in a weird, um, in a weird space where you know they 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 just going back to when things were. When things were still cool, before all the pressure, before all the, um, what would you call it? Not, I, and I'm not even talking about now, like during this time. Sure. Just, yeah, just, in general. Like, yeah, in general, you know, I think we just got so consumed uh, by everything in the world that we're yearning for basic things, bro. You know, when you sure. see people going, man, I just, I just want to be outside, <laughs> you know, and not, not in the. Uh, in, in my yard i just like that's all i want to do i just want to hug somebody so the things that you took for granted back then yeah. you start to realize man these things are actually so important you know um yeah. i just i just want i'm tired of motivational quotes man i just want to do the things that they're saying <laughs> the motivational i think those motivational quotes need to change actually and uh that's what they need to become not believe in yourself hug someone when we are done with this <laughs> whatever that must be the new <laughs> yeah. that must Let's be get... the new motivation what we must get the um my leaven a, a, like a deal with Carlton uh, cards you know that company ah. <laughs> right birthday I, messages it, it's so funny i um i got reminded of a facebook post that came up uh today actually that's so weird yeah. uh, i said um I want my Levin to narrate all Animal Planet documentaries <laughs> going forward. <laughs> Do you think that the penguin cannot kill it, Louis? <laughs> I'm Levin, guys. Come on now. <laughs> I would do that every day without a doubt. Every that would be great fire, fam. Okay. Like, I, the one thing I always wished for is, like, I wish my... My GPS voice was like my wheelies or something. <laughs> How <amazing would> that be? <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, yeah, that's why. Yeah. I mean, I don't know who we call for that because uh, DJ DJ Fresh was on a Garmin device once. Was he? Yeah, yeah. I, I could have sworn there was a pack, like a downloadable pack for voices, but it it was basic, like rudimentary so stuff. Dope, like, 
if you get lost, he must do that laugh that he does. Ho, 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 ho. <laughs> <laughs> that would not be helpful at all, dog. At no, all, at all. Terrible. Absolutely My terrible. Kid, um, I want to say thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you for all the insights. Oh, I think there's been like so much dope stuff that you've told us. Do you have anything else you could share with the people, you know, who may be struggling through these times or are trying to figure things out? Maybe that, that could aid them in some way that could serve them. Bro, you know what, Nay? I've been trying my best to to jump on. I just, I've, we we've been hosting this Lurie's uh, <clears throat> excuse me panel discussion, um, which has been amazing, you know. And I've I've really enjoyed chatting to 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 creative people or anybody in the creative space right now, um, and and trying to help where I can. The thing is, for me, growing up where I grew up, I didn't have. A big brother or somebody I can call on to tell me about design and all of these things. You know, most people don't and didn't ever. So sure. that's what I'm trying to do as much as I can now. You know, so um, I've been like a lot of people would DM me, and you know, I, I've created this list of things that inspire me, accounts that inspire me, documentaries that inspire me, and yeah. I just share that with whoever asks for it. You know, so if you like, yo man, who are the people that inspire you on Instagram? Who should I be following? I'm a photographer. I'm a designer. I just share yep. that information so that you know once again you just pass the baton on and hopefully it'll it'll help somebody and one of my favorite stories actually this guy was a photographer he jumped mm. onto a to an, an IG live I was doing with with Joe Human and sure. he said hey man I'm uh I'm stuck you know I feel so much pressure like I see people making stuff now during the lockdown during this pandemic and yeah. I have no idea what to do and I, I remember reading a quote that said, um, you must always remember that uh, this is a pandemic, not a productivity contest. Um, sure. So don't put yourself under that pressure. So for a lot of people, maybe you just needed the time to reset. Mm. So I was like, oh, man, the best thing I can tell you to do right now is um, look at all of these things, uh, this list that I'm going to send you. Don't like get off your get off like traditional social media. Just go online yeah. and. And just like, just do some research, just go back to what it was that made you want to take pictures in the first place um, yeah. and, and let that spark up again. So he says what he did, and this was his process, which I really liked. He started a separate Instagram account for himself. So he didn't tell anybody about it, no followers. And he mm. just started posting stuff on there for himself. So until he got to like 30 posts, he kind of saw the common thread and what he actually always likes going back to what his style is. And then he was like, oh, damn, man, this is, this is actually what I started shooting in the beginning. But <laughs> because of everything I've been consuming, I changed yeah. my style because I thought that this is what people want to see, you know? Mm. So, and he's like, dude, I'm so fired up. Like, I, I, I go to bed late because I'm editing. I wake up early to catch that first light because I've got pictures in mind. Like, this is it, man. I'm back. And, yo, dude, you have no idea how much that fuels me, you know, because... Yeah. It was just such a simple thing that I told him to do. And now he's like, yo, bro, people aren't even ready for the stuff I'm about to put out because I'm, I'm so fueled by this, which is so amazing, you know? And, uh, and I saw some of his stuff. And compared to the stuff that he was doing, whack. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. But, but you know why? Because he didn't know why he was doing it. He was just taking pictures in chair mm. to try and look good. But now he's telling a story, you know? It's like that thing we were talking about earlier with finding a style and going, when you see that picture, you know that it comes from Ban Ban, you know? So, yeah, you know the aesthetic. Yeah. So, I mean, if there are any creatives on here, you know, and you are feeling stuck, I think my best advice would be to just unfollow the people who, who just bring bad energy and don't inspire, you know, you to create. Um, the other thing, which is a tool that people don't use, is like your save button on Instagram. It's a very powerful yeah. thing. Go yeah. back to that folder with all the things that you've saved. Mm. And that's pretty much the real you. Because you often save things without thinking about it. Oh, this is dope. You just like it without even thinking about it. And I think once you go back and you look at that, it's like a mood board that can that can kind of like you look at it and you're like, yeah, this is this is actually my vibe, you know? And I think that could potentially set you back um, or put you back on track and, um, you know, start making stuff again. That's yeah, dope. I think, I think 
I think I think that's really good, like pragmatic advice, and it's more helpful than believe in yourself. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Me, I'm all about. There's no believe in yourself. Like I think you you, you have to actually do some work here. <laughs> you know, like do some physical work. <laughs> believe in yourself. <laughs> Yo, I got you. Believe in yourself. My G- as, as I'm 11. Yeah, you must believe in yourself. If my 11 told me that, I'd be like, sure. Uh, yeah, I got you. Sure, then it'll make sure. more sense. My 11 okay. motivational quotes. That's an account that I want to see. <laughs> the one. We just found something now already. The new one dropping soon. The my 11 motivational quotes. Look out for it on all social media platforms. My G, thank you Good, again thank for joining us yeah. soon. Yeah? Always a pleasure, man. T- take care, bro. Salut, fam. Ciao. Ta. Hey, that was wonderful, uh, Donovan Goliath. Thank you guys for tuning in. It's been an incredible episode. Some amazing insights, some really good pragmatic advice. And I think, you know, uh, if you're an artist, even if you're not, this is an interesting time. It's uh, maybe a time for you to look within yourself, take an introspective look uh, to decide how you feel about stuff. Uh, and then and then um, maneuver your way through the world, uh, knowing what it is exactly that you want. We are hoping that you guys are doing okay out there that you've hopefully found some useful tips today that went beyond believe in yourself, which is a really lazy motivation. But uh, nonetheless, we do appreciate you tuning in. We hope you're doing okay wherever you are. To everybody who was commenting in the second, we uh, appreciate you guys too. Uh, we'll be back with some more fun episodes. This has been great, man. I really enjoy it. This is one of uh, the things that's kept me going through these uh, interesting times. And hopefully you guys have found something that gives you as much uh, kind of life and fulfillment. And if you haven't, hopefully you do along the way. Uh, from us and the good people at Tell Us More. We'll see you guys soon. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Okay, thanks. Bye.